All right, my friends, how do you create beautiful inner voice movement on your piano chords? Well, first of all, what do I mean by inner voice movement? Well, inner voice movement is when you add some melodies underneath your main melody and they kind of move around and they create some really interesting harmonies. As a quick example, this is the end of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. The chords are... Sounds pretty good, but check it out now. So in today's lesson, I'm going to show you exactly how to add up to three inner voices to your piano arrangements so that they sound more beautiful and interesting. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, we're going to use the last few measures of Over the Rainbow to demonstrate this concept. We'll go over the basic chords and then I'll show you how to start adding these inner voices, starting with one voice, two voices, and at the very end of this lesson, you'll learn how to add up to three inner voices. So make sure to watch all the way to the end. All right, before we get started, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button, and if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. All right, so the tune we're using is Over the Rainbow, and at the very end, you've got this beautiful melody. So we're gonna be focusing on these chords and this melody to add our inner voices. Okay, quick review on the chords. So first chord is an E7, E, G sharp, B, and D, melody. And then we have like an A7, okay, A, C sharp, E, and G. And then D7, right, really simple. It's like a D major chord. And we're just adding the seventh, which makes it kind of sound jazzy. And then a G7 is gonna be this, okay? Really, really simple. So before we move on, make sure you can play these basic chords in the left hand with your melody. All right, so how do you take it from that to this? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about next. All right, so how do you add your first inner voice? Well, the trick is to suspend your third. Okay, so check this out. First chord, E7. The third of the chord is the G sharp, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna suspend it up a half step to the A. This is called a sus4, okay? So we're gonna do it on the E chord, and then resolve it, and then we'll do it on the A chord. Okay. All I'm doing is I'm taking the third of the chord and I'm lifting it up a half step and then I resolve it down to the third. Okay, let's try on the D chord. There's the sus4 getting resolved. And then on the G7, we're gonna play a sus4 and this resolves to the B. Okay, and so what this does is it creates a little inner voice. Instead of going, right, we have you hear it? And you can even sing this inner voice, right? Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Right? And then when you add your melody, it just sounds really beautiful. It's almost like a cello playing a little counter melody. Now this sounds great, but all of your notes are sort of clustered together. And part of getting a really nice inner voice movement is to spread the notes of your chord out. So this is step number two. And basically in this step, we're gonna take these notes from these chords and we're gonna spread it out a little bit. Okay, so basically what I'm doing now is I'm taking that E seven chord with the sus four, and I'm putting the fifth in the top, okay? You see that? And then we resolve the suspension, and then on the A chord, a little spread out there, right? Uh, the fifth is the melody already, so we don't have to play it down here. That gets resolved. And then on the D chord, okay, same thing. The fifth that was down here goes to the top, and then we end on our G chord, and then it resolves to the G7. So now that the notes are spread out a little bit more, you can hear that inner voice a little bit better.
By the way, the lesson sheet music you're seeing up here on the top left of the screen is downloadable and printable over at pianowithjohnny.com. You can also change the key of this entire lesson with the click of one button with our smart sheet music. So I'll put a link to all of that below. All right, you might be thinking, Johnny, that sounds great, but I wanna add a second inner voice. So this brings us to step number three. And in this step, we're gonna take it from what we just played to this. It's a little more interesting. So what exactly am I doing? Well, I'm using a really cool trick where you can harmonize your sus4 chord with the nine, okay? And then when you resolve that chord, like here, I drop that nine to a flat nine. Doesn't that sound beautiful? So in a second, I'm gonna show you exactly how to apply this idea. But before we move on, make sure you understand that the ninth is just a whole step above the root of the chord. So we're adding the nine on the top, there's our sus4, and then we go to the flat nine, and it creates a really beautiful sound. So how do we apply this to these chords? Well, let's look at our first chord, that E chord. This is what we had before, and now we're gonna add the nine in, the F sharp, and now play the full chord. Doesn't that sound beautiful? And then when we resolve the A to the G sharp down below, we're gonna drop this down to harmonize it. Okay, so check it out now. You hear that? Two inner voices moving, creating a beautiful sixth interval. And so now we have two inner voices moving below our melody. Let's look at the next chord, our A7 chord. This is what we had before. Let's add the nine in. It's a whole step above the root. And then resolve it. You hear that? It's so beautiful, okay? Uh, next one, our D7. That's the chord I taught you before. Let's add the nine in. It's a whole step above the root. And then resolve these. Isn't that gorgeous? And then the G chord. This is what I taught you earlier. Let's add the nine in. Again, just a whole step above the root and then our inner voices move down like that. By the way, if these terms like the ninth or the flat nine sound unfamiliar to you, these are called chord extensions and chord alterations. You can learn more about these in our courses on chord extensions and chord alterations. You'll learn a bunch of great exercises plus how to apply these notes to your chords. So I'll put a link to both of those courses below. All right, if you wanna add one more inner voice to your chords to have a total of three inner voices, this brings us to step number four, and now these chords will sound like this. Doesn't that sound amazing? So what exactly am I doing? Well, I'm using a very cool trick where I resolve the fifth note from my chord down to the flat five, which is also called the sharp 11. So let me show you what I mean. If you take our first chord, that E7 chord that I showed you earlier, there's the sus four, here's your nine. When I resolve these two notes down, I'm also gonna resolve the fifth down to the flat five, which is also called the sharp 11, okay? So now we have this. So how do you apply this idea to all of these chords? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you next. So first chord, this is exactly what I taught you, but instead of going like this, we're gonna drop that fifth, that B, down to a B flat. So check it out, first chord, and it drops down, okay? So it's kind of a dissonant sound, but it does sound really nice in the context of this melody. So once more, you have three voices dropping down underneath the melody. We've got one dropping here, we've got one dropping here, and then one dropping here. Okay, let's look at the next chord our A7 chord with the nine. For this one, I like to play it the same way that I taught you before, just because I don't really care for the sharp 11 going up for this particular chord. If you wanna add the sharp 11, you can if you like that sound. Okay, next chords. Ooh, what am I doing here? Okay, let's look at the first chord, the D chord. This is what I taught you earlier. And before we were just resolving these down, but now we're gonna add the fifth to it and resolve this down to the flat five or the sharp 11, okay? So now we have, doesn't 
that sound amazing? And again, we have three inner voices. We have da da, and then we have da da, and then we have da da, right? And together, you get a really beautiful sound. Okay, final chords. Ooh, this is beautiful. Same chord I taught you, but now on the final chord, we're gonna think of that fifth as dropping down to a flat five. So now when the melody comes up to the E, we're gonna think of that D as sort of being doubled by a second voice. So one voice is going up for the main melody, but the other voice is coming down to the sharp 11. And so therefore we have first chord, second chord. Again, three voices moving in the middle, one moving down, two moving down, and then three moving down. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the lesson, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 1,000 step-by-step lessons for all playing levels, where you'll learn your favorite songs, styles, and how to improvise at the piano. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.